I'm going to tell you a story. I was in the nut house when I was 29, right? And uh, I'm sitting there minding my own business and uh, being very non-religious. And the voice says in my head, Sean, you are the second coming of Christ. So I kind of freaked out and said, I don't even believe in God. So I went and saw my psychiatrist and said, I'm the second coming of Christ. So he said, Sean, you've got grandiose ideas. You're psychotic, possible schizophrenic, PTSD and bipolar and manic de depression. So I went, oh, okay, so I didn't tell anybody that I was Jesus for 20 years. I kept it a secret, you know, it's like undercover brother. But that's cool. I have taught young Jacob to be Jesus, the second coming. I've passed my crown to him and taught him through 1RR Intel Cell and uh, made him highly intelligent, uh, our highest intelligence officer. But, um, yeah, when you awaken at 29 to the fact that you're in a movie and you're a superstar, uh, it puts you on edge, you know, you're like, Wow, I'm being watched. I'm being judged. So yeah, it changes the whole gist of it all, you know? Like, whoa, I'm in a fucking movie. But 20 years later, once you worked out you're in a movie, you start working out the movie, you know? You're like, right. Maybe I'm in a computer simulator and I chose this life before I was born and we're in a computer simulator on board a spaceship in the computer and we're in a virtual world like a dream. Like a fucking dream! Yeah, it's not real, it's a mirage. You know, it's... it's it's a mathematical equation of coded numbers in timelines. Destiny. Everything happens for a reason. There's four rules of magic. First rule, magic only believes in you when you start believing in it. Second rule, everything happens for a reason. Third rule, that opportunity knocks twice a day. Fourth rule, there's no such thing as coincidence because it's just a fucking movie. Yeah, the, like I looked for the cameras for 20 years, you know. I'm like, where are the cameras? I know it's a movie because of all the coincidences and... Uh, yeah, everything happening for a reason, you know. It's like, yeah, sure. Sure, I'm just by myself and not being watched. But, um, yeah, you're, in a, you're a prisoner on a theoretical, theoretical stage. You're a prisoner in a movie. And, uh, yeah, there's only one way out of here. Like being a prisoner? Down in Tassie, you go up onto the overland track and you get a map of the overland track and at about the fourth hut, down there's a, a river and you cross the river and you go into the Never Never. <coughs> and you go through the Never Never and up the top to the mountain and up there's a lake, and there is a portal.
or a spaceship. So you throw a piece of topaz in the lake and the portal opens. Then you can get out of the movie and be in the, the real world, the real Hollywood. You don't have to die. You can get out of here. But yeah, it's just a prison. Hey, I'm a prisoner. I know it. Stuck in a body with sins of the flesh. My goom, my go. Yeah, it's an atomic prison. But um, there's seven chakras, seven candlesticks, seven kingdoms, <coughs> and seven dimensions. Now around you at all times are seven doors into each dimension. Now what you gotta do, you gotta know the code for each door. And the code is a frequency, an oscillation, a vibration. Ah! Vibration! Yeah, it opens up the seven doors. But if you go into the fifth dimension, remember to take a ball of string because uh, everything's backwards there. And the cameras are in the fourth dimension. That's how they film us. It's the future that are watching us. Big Brother. You know, 2,555 AD. They make movies out of people's lives. The gods watch us. The future watches us. Our dead relatives watch us. Heaven watches us. Hell watches us. The pantheon gods watch us. And so does future ASIO. Yeah, but... If you get into the seventh dimension, that's where the leprechaun is and the uh, the holy kingdom and the uh, rainbow serpent that's a prisoner. So you get in there into the seventh dimension, you're smart enough to make the eighth dimension and ninth and tenth as many dimensions as you like, as you can think of. So remember that. Fucking remember that! I'm quite a sensitive guy. I'm not aggressive. magical world, you know, it's a magical prison. But, um, yeah, I remember one night, I was in Tassie when I was 31, and the bikies were coming to this place where I was, so I went and hid in the bush, deep in the bush, you know, and I hid under a, a burnout log. Anyway, I'm there about 12 o'clock at night, I'm nearly crawled into me beanie, got me jacket on. And I'm fucking freezing, so I'm awake. And I hear this, where did he go? I was like, who the fuck is that? And then I hear this, where did he go? Where is he? They were right on top of me. If I would have jumped out, I would have caught him, you know? But they were the camera crew from the fourth dimension. They couldn't find me. They were 
looking for me, you know? So that's how I know that it's just a movie. Plus, being an ex-forward scout in the infantry of Australia, I, I developed my sixth sense, right? I used to know there was something there before it came and, and shit like that before my smell, my eyes, my ears, and my touch picked it up. I had a sixth sense. And this sixth sense of mine, since I was 29, I'm now 50, tells me something is watching me. You know, I'm like fucking Big Bird on Sesame Street for the future Nazi uh, Nazi uh, time traveling children to watch. I'm like a science show. You know, every day I get out of bed and bang, I'm on, on the stage in the dream, you know. It's a bit psychotic. You know, a grandiose idea. Bit of schizophrenia, you know, all the madness. But yeah, once you've gone mad 50 times over 20 years, right? Okay, you can't go mad anymore. Okay, you accept that this is a fake reality and that you're not in control and you have a destiny, right? You accept this, so you're not scared of it anymore. Okay, once you've had your 50th drug-induced schizophrenic psychosis, you're basically cured, because you can't go mad anymore. I mean, there's only so much madness you can take before you accept it and go, righto, it's all real. You know, that, that psychotic episode, of God talking to me, that really happened. That dove that came out of the sky and landed in your garden, that that white dove, that was from God. That, that was from real, you know? It's like, but hey, that's a psychotic episode. <clears throat> but you get used to it being in your movie. You can manifest shit if you're, if you're good at writing your script for your movie, you know? And yes, you did choose your movie, your script before you were born. You also chose your parents to teach them lessons. But, um, yeah, you can make your movie great, you know, happy, compassionate, love, you know. Once you find you're a prisoner, you know, the only way out's through the portal or death. Yeah, so, but you have an audience, trust me, we all do. You, you are not alone. Remember that, by Goom by Gaul. Yeah, and, and then you got the aliens as well, you know. <clears throat> so when you see a Nazi spaceship fly past, and there's a reptile driving it, remember to wave. You see, I'm a pirate copy. I'm actually a space buccaneer called Captain Stone. And I've reincarnated many times since Atlantis. Since Atlantis fell. And when Atlantis fell, because we had time travel, we uh, went to 2555 AD and uh, put our ship there in the time lock so no one could get past the future and rule the future. 
So when I die, I will be reincarnated again, but reborn into my Atlantean warrior body on board the Atlantean spaceship Emit, and uh, the whole crew will be there, and uh, we'll be ready to fight the Time Nazis.